UK, Chumacracy, allowing thousands of unnecessary COVID-19 deaths by the time you read this, I will have watched, via live webcast, the funeral service of my childhood friend Nojin. A few weeks ago, I wrote about him and his long COVID-19 hospitalization in London. Nojin spent nearly five months hooked up to a ventilator in intensive care before death released him from his suffering. The impact of grief on my friend's family brought home to me the agony of some 130,000 families in the UK whose loved ones have also been lost to COVID-19. A new Penn State study shows that every death from COVID-19 will impact approximately nine surviving close family members. This means more than 1 million people in the UK have now been directly impacted by bereavement, and millions more indirectly. Then there is the substantial number of people who are experiencing, long COVID. A recent snapshot poll found more than 1 million people in the UK were suffering from ongoing symptoms. All this implies a huge mental and economic impact whose ripple effects are likely to last for years. But who is responsible for this crisis and its catastrophic toll on the British people? A few days ago, Dominic Cummings, former chief advisor to the British Prime Minister, offered his testimony on the pandemic response to a parliamentary select committee. He said, tens of thousands of people died who didn't need to die. He called the PM, Boris Johnson, unfit for the job, adding that, when the public needed us most, we failed. And I'd like to say to all the families of those who have died unnecessarily, how sorry I am for the mistakes that were made, and my own mistakes. The mistakes Cummings referred to were many, but chief among them was failing to act quickly, twice, in March and December 2020, when scientific evidence made it clear that locking down was necessary to save lives. According to Professor Neil Ferguson, one of the first scientists to raise the alarm in Britain, locking down a week earlier in March would have saved 20,000 to 30,000 lives. The March mistake was repeated in December. The Prime Minister, anxious to be seen to save Christmas, dithered as a new variant, B117, also known as the Kent variant, spread rapidly throughout the country. Cummings said, the Prime Minister believed the economic harm done by lockdown would be worse than Covid itself. Johnson's flawed thinking in putting the economy before people's lives caused damage to both. The UK government's decision to allow schools to open after Christmas seeded transmission chains that likely killed my friend in London. Other factors contributed to the crisis too. The austerity measures adopted by the Tories since 2010 have pushed many into precarious lives, leaving them unwilling to get tested and lose income when needing to isolate Johnson blamed the lockdown hesitancy on the freedom-loving nation, but in reality it was a lack of social safety nets and the sort of Brexit thinking, promoted by the Tories for years, which encouraged anti-system culture and skepticism towards experts. Procurement was also a disaster, especially of testing and tracing capacity and personal protective equipment. To say the least, there was questionable use of public funds. But were any lessons learned from March and December? The answer is no. The UK once again failed to act quickly by delaying the closure of its borders to India when it was obvious that the B1617.2 variant was killing thousands in that country. Johnson said the impending trade deal with India had nothing to do with his decision, but that seems unlikely, because the borders to less problematic Bangladesh and Pakistan were closed two weeks earlier. His government's reluctance to act decisively continues as it refuses to introduce localized lockdowns in COVID hotspots. As a result of these inactions, the UK will almost certainly be facing another surge, with the Indian variant being dominant. This puts next month's planned easing of restrictions in the balance. Johnson has promised a public inquiry into the pandemic, starting in spring next year. The inquiry is likely to take a long time to complete. Johnson, who seems uncomfortable with the concept of accountability, knows this. The bereaved families deserve to know exactly what happened and who is responsible. In the meantime, it remains a matter of life and death, especially in the face of an emergent and rapidly increasing variant, to ensure that lessons have been learnt and Johnson is held accountable for his actions. But unfortunately this is not likely as British politics has regressed into a chumacracy. I am no fan of Cummings but I agree with him when he observes, the political establishment is full of people who want to be something rather than do something. Until this changes, there will be no end to the misery of the British people and no accountability for millions of sorrows.